Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Laurent Bukabza and today we're going to talk about the so famous Moonlight Sonata. Moonlight Sonata. I have a lot of questions about that name. Why is it called the Moonlight Sonata in the first place? So I'm going to share with you four aspects of my research and I'll give you my conclusion and I want to know if you agree with my conclusion or if you think I'm completely off. The first one is the title itself. The second one is the Heiligenstadt Testament. The fourth one is the form of this movement and the sonata. And the fourth one is the funeral march in which I talked about in the 12th sonata, third movement. Title. Well, with a little bit of research, I found out that Beethoven never accepted any titles for his compositions. Huh. The only title he accepted was the Pathetic. Why did he accept it? Because his editor, the person who printed out the music for him, said, you know, Beethoven, sonata number one, three, five, seven, that doesn't talk to anybody. Can we put this one, which is so different than the other ones, as Pathetic? Would you agree with this? And he probably said, okay. That's why the number eight sonata is the Pathetic. But then later on in life, because he accepted on one sonata, he was bugged all the time for having his pieces carrying a name. And every time he blow off people saying, I'm not interested, I'm not interested, I'm not interested. So Moonlight, why is it called Moonlight? Well, it appears that in 1852, in an essay, Willem von Lenz cited a poet called Rehrstab, who wrote that this piece reminded him of a walk lonely walk during the night around a lake in Switzerland. Rael Stab wrote this in 1832. Willem von Lenz wrote that in his essay in 1852. But this piece was written in 1801 and Beethoven died in 1827. Rael Stab gave that name five years after Beethoven died. And the title became official 50 years after the piece was created. So. I don't feel that bad to try to rename, because that's the goal of this argument, to rename that piece, because I do not believe it should be called the Moonlight Sonata at all. Moonlight is from the Rail Stab, and Rail Stab is 1832, which is Romantic period. And at the Romantic period, a lonely walk along a lake at night with the moonlight reflecting on the lake. All that are imageries of melancholy, depression, sadness that can tend to suicide. Now, interestingly enough, we come to the second point. The Heiligenstadt Testament is a testament written by Beethoven in 1802. This piece is written in 1801, when Beethoven writes to his two brothers that actually he considering committing suicide. Rallstad, imagery of suicide, and now Beethoven writing down that he's going to commit suicide in 1802. But he says also in his testament that he's not going to commit suicide because as a man of art, he cannot commit suicide. And he explains also that five years later, so it, five years before 1802, he starts losing his hearing and that's extremely hard for him to accept the fact that he's not going to hear his music and communicate with the entire world. Obviously, Beethoven never committed suicide, we know that, and he died in 18. 27 and we found its testament after his death in his house but his ideas of committing suicide was present he writes it in 1802 okay so now we have another element that relates moonlight to death and then i said in the previous videos the way these no repeated notes were starting from the beginning was the exact same that the funeral march does Pam, pa pam, pa pam. This dotted rhythm is very present in the moonlight, but it's actually already there in the funeral march at Sata number 12. So, moonlight copied the funeral march and not the other way around. So, that's more element to actually start calling this piece a funeral piece and not a moonlight. Moonlight seems light to me, could have some happy in it could have some dreamy idea of it. To me, that's gloomy. It's not dreamy. It's talking about death, suicide. It's talking about depression and melancholy. Now let's go to the fourth point. 
linking now the funeral march into this piece. This piece is actually a sonata quasi una fantasia. Why fantasia? Because fantasia is a nice way for Beethoven not to be forced to write in an exact sonata form with three or four movements and they have to be ordered in a certain way. His first movement is a deluded allegro sonata form. Once again, look up there if you don't know what's a sonata form and you can learn from it and then you can come back to the video. I'll explain the dilution of that sonata form at the end. But right now I want to go to the analogies between the funeral march and this entire sonata, not even the first movement. So what is the funeral march? It's an A section, the one I just played, this one. With a very recognizable rhythm. We have the famous one later on that everybody knows. Which is from Chopin, that's after but we recognize that rhythm, that daughters of team, T team, we recognize that. So that's the A section. And then we have a B section. And that B section is actually major. In the funeral march from Chopin, the second section is in major also. And then we go to that third section, which is the repeat of that A section. Well, let's look at this sonata for a second. We have, everybody knows this movement, so I'm not going to play it for you. I'm just gonna play the beginning for one reason. I'm gonna name the notes of the right hand. G, C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, and so on. That repeats. Then when the theme starts, so G, C, we have the, the G, G that comes in, and then that's a tonic chord, and let's go to the dominant first inversion. That's very important. I'll come back in a second into that. So that's the beginning. We have this G, G, and we go tonic to dominant first inversion. If that was a funeral march, the middle part or the second part of this section should have a major key in it. Does it? Well, as it is said on the bottom of the first movement to go right to the second without interruption, guess what's the key of the second movement? In the funeral march, the A section was A flat minor. But in the middle section, it was A flat major. Aha! So we go A flat major, A flat minor, A flat minor, A flat major. Well, let's look at this movement, is in C sharp minor. So, the second movement should be in C sharp major or D flat major. And it is. Aha! So maybe the second movement is the middle section of the funeral march. And now comes the last movement. So what is that last movement? We need the recap of the beginning. Do you remember the notes I said on the first movement? I say G, C, E, G, C, E. And the chord progression was a C sharp minor chord. One, and then five, first inversion. Well, let's play the beginning. G, C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E. G, C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, the exact same note in the same order. And when I'm finishing that run, G, 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 coincidence? And when I do, I go to the first inversion of the five chord. So the exact same chord progression to start with. Coincidence again? That's a lot of coincidence. And you want the last coincidence of them all? The third movement of Moonlight is a sonata form. Not a rondo sonata form, a real sonata form. So now we have three movements with two sonata forms. So yes, I agree, it's not exactly funeral march because the first section and the last section should actually be the exact same. They're not the same. They have the same form. And the middle section is in major as it should be in a funeral march. So I'm not going to call this sonata a funeral march. But I'm going to rename that sonata what it should have been named from the very beginning based on my research. And I want to have your opinion on it. This sonata should be called Funeral Sonata Fantasia. It's a lot more accurate for me. So let's look now at that form very briefly. Everybody knows that first movement. I need to spend hours on it. We have introduction for measure. and then comes the first theme. So as I said, it's a diluted version. So it's not really a theme because a theme usually... Then 
comes the second theme with these beautiful dissonances. Once again, second theme, guarantees it. That's your second theme. And we don't really know if it's a B minor or an E minor, it's in between. We go to the development, and the development starts when we have this G sharp repeated many, many, many times. This development is pretty much only made of this repeated G sharp that comes back nonstop, like really somebody who's very depressed. And then we go back and we recognize. And comes the second theme a little after this. And that second theme is in the key now of C sharp minor, C sharp major, we don't really know. And then we end with a coda as Beethoven likes, but listen, that coda is interesting because that coda uses the rhythm we had from the beginning. And it's repeated nonstop up to the end. So D, G, G, so something very funeral, very heavy. So once again, me calling that the moonlight, I can't anymore. For me, that's a funeral sonata fantasy. One more thing before I let you listen to it. It's an adagio sostenuto and it's a cut time. Cut time means what? It means it's only two beats per measure. So adagio is pretty slow. And I'm going to show you something. If I play some, a tempo that's pretty slow, that would be about this, slower than an actual walking pace, which walking pace would be about this. If I go a little slower, this is my half note. So if I keep that tempo, that would be. And that sounds really fast, isn't it? But that's what Beethoven wanted. I'm not being wrong on this one. I'm just pushing what he's doing. So what he's saying is go slow, because an adagio doesn't sound Dante but not too slow. And the mistake you don't want to do is thinking four beats. Because it's not four beats, it's two beats. So you have to feel in two beats. And there's another reason that's a lot more musical than the technicality I brought up. You have a theme in here, as I said, a theme, which is this one. If you play that theme, you need to sing it all the way, all the way. with one breath because the theme you're not going to cut that theme it's too short to be cut in the middle so if you're trying to sing that at the super slow tempo i hear so often like this so let's let's take a breather all together and let's try to sing that with one breath okay so take a large breath let's go so breathe in breathe in and let's go keep singing If you did, that means you take a really large breath and honestly, that probably didn't look really, really good because if I'm singing next to you, I'm just da, 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 to make it happen. Well, then that means it's not natural, isn't it? If you have to force things to make things happen, how is that natural? Okay, let's do the other experiment now. Let's go much faster, not as fast as you did the first time, but let's go a tempo of a half note. So. much closer tempo than reality. And I'm going to go back to the section. You're going to breathe in and you're going to sing that with one breath also. Let's do that together. Let's breathe in. Let's go. Keep singing. Okay. Was it difficult? No. Did you have a lot more air left? Yep. Did you have to breathe that much in? Not really. So that's natural. Okay, so when you're singing, and that's how Beethoven think music, because every composer in this planet think about singing, because singing was the very first instrument. I already said that in the past sonatas. If you can do all of this with one breath, you're on the right track. If you need two breaths or three breaths, that means that phrase is way too slow. You're dragging the tempo. To all the students, 
saying your lines with one breath it says one long slur you're not breaking slurs okay so i made my demonstration about the tempo i made my demonstration about the sonata form of this first movement and hopefully you were convinced that we should rename it the funeral sonata fantasy or in french la sonate fantasy funèbre now let's listen to my performance of this first movement thank you
So was I able to convince you with my interpretation that it's actually a funeral son of a fantasia? Please leave comments. Tell me if you think the demonstration is completely out of the whack or if it actually makes sense. If you want to know more about me, you can of course follow me on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, or of course on my website that shows underneath www.laurentbookofza.net. And of course, all these links are in the description below. So you just need to look at the description, you have all the links. And I'll see you next week for the second movement of this funeral sonata fantasy from Beethoven. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.